you see our next guest on ER, you have heard her as the voice of one of the most amazing princesses. You can see her in a number of roles, but you know her as Agent Belinda May on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I bring which they did. They did an amazing job in, you know, telling this uh, legendary story from China. And, uh, and I always thought that they wanted this, like, kind of like little girl, like, high voice. And no, they, they wanted my voice, which, is, uh, which was really a, a coup. Without an accent, which was another coup. Were you surprised at the reaction that audiences had in that there was always a, an undercurrent of Disney needs to branch out and be more diverse. Disney needs to tell more stories other than flaxen haired princesses and everybody has a very similar skin tone and a very similar. When you history. say flaxen. Just very, I, I, either blonde or dark. Well, until, until, uh, until break, it was always blonde or brunette. There were never any redheads. Right. So, no, 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 Matt, you, that's right. Ariel, that is right. You're right. Well, Hugh. Devin has the he doesn't have it. Hugh. Horrible moderator. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very sarcastic. I'm very sarcastic. I've been, I've sold all the mermaid American uh, population. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I think Disney knew back then, I mean, Mulan is 20 years old. More. More than 20 years old. I think it came out, came out in 19... Is it 93 or 95? 95, right? So, yeah. And, uh, and I think Disney felt that they needed to diversify. And that's why they were taking such a big risk. And on top of that, they were um, really putting a lot of time and effort. I remember the, you know, the directors and the producers, they went to China. They did all this research. So um, it, was, it was important for them to get it right. And, uh, and, and it still astounds me to this day that the, uh, the younger generations, you know, fall in love with Mulan, and it's just so classic. That's the beauty of Disney. So, and here's my Disney way, Princess Way, <laughs> everybody. I love 
following you on, on Twitter and Instagram because I love seeing all of these bracelets that fans around the world have given you. Are these, this is all from Dallas or? Uh, no, there, there were about five that I wore that were from um, other cons. And uh, I, I don't know how this started really. I think it did start on Twitter when somebody noticed that I wore beaded bracelets and then some few, you know, a few people started bringing them to the cons. And I started twitting, you know, twittering about it, twittering, tweeting about it. Um, I got tired. <laughs> I was signing autographs all day. And, uh, um, and then it became this thing where, because I love beaded bracelets, I love stone and wood and, and anything that's handmade, that, you know, there's a lot of energy and love from it, and it's just a, a wonderful way for me to bond with you guys. So thank you so much for all the ones who brought me beaded bracelets or any sort of bracelets. Thank you. It's, you know, I love coming to these things because it really is um, about connecting and sharing. And it's got to be gratifying because you, you'll spend months in production, you know, basically you know, a week or ten days filming each episode. It's almost in a vacuum in and of itself. This is an opportunity for actor and Clark Grace, another one we had him here in town for uh, the indie film they did at Bell Special. Why didn't Clark Grace get a little applause? Yeah. 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 I love Clark. Is there one fan interaction you've had through all the, the, the various roles you've had that just said, okay, this is why I do this job? Is there one thing you'd like to uh, pull out of your uh, file pad and say, that was it, that's it. For an episode? For, yeah, really, any, any, any of your roles, because, I mean, there, there are people who know you specifically from ER. Right. Who specifically from <laughs> <Woo! laughs> She's on Shield, too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just that what, what makes me want to do it all the time so and kill myself. Yes, you know. Have three hours of sleep, yeah. Um, it's, it's absolutely the passion and the love for um, what I do. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, we're, we live in this kind of little bubble where we go into the studio and we shoot hours on end. Um, and then, you know, I come to one of these things and it's so gratifying because I'm a girl that was trained in theater. So to have that connection and, and to know that, oh, there are actually people watching the show and, you know, and being inspired by it or whatever that, that gives them the joy of, you know, connecting with the characters and the stories. I mean, that's, that's why I love my job. You know, it, it's just all about just entertaining as well as connecting with people. So. And we've got a ton of questions, so we're going to get started with somebody who's been in here for the entire panel. Good to see you in the best. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, as you may, you don't show very many emotions. How do you prepare for that? <laughs> um, what do you mean? <laughs> She's very emotional. She cries on the inside. <laughs> And laughs on the inside. And <laughs> um, it's you know it was a very difficult role um, in the beginning because I wasn't sure who Agent May was. Um, there wasn't much in the pilot episode about who she was, except there was this mysterious thing that happened in Bahrain, and so it you know made her give up being a shield agent out in the field. And uh, I had to really trust the writers and believe that they had a journey for her. And um, so for me, it, it's, it's about feeling all those emotions, but keeping them locked up inside of me. And I think um, what was so wonderful is that so many people related to her, which surprised me, but I think a lot of us do that. You know, we kind of bottle up our feelings and we don't show who we love or, you know, if we're in pain. And, uh, and that's May, so, yeah. It's all, on the, it's all in my eyebrow. <laughs> it's all in my eyebrow. <laughs> and every now and then there's a spark. A spark, yes, every now and then. And then she beats somebody up. <laughs> right on here. Hi, um, so thanks for coming to Dallas. And, um, Glad to be here. 
If you had any superpower, what would it be and why? Um, if I'm in LA, I'd love to have teleportation. So, <laughs> so I'm never stuck in traffic. <laughs> um, if I'm in Dallas, lately, I think uh, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I want to be able to have a big umbrella. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. I'm on the 405. I'm never getting off the 405. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> right here. Are you going to tie into anything else in Marvel? And if you are, how? up to Marvel. Marvel, you know, there's the cinematic world, and then there's the television world, and, uh, and they have interlinked us, but as far as what their future plans are, you know as much as I do. Yeah, you know Marvel. They, they really don't tell us very much. So, and I wouldn't tell you, but I'm like, you. Disney has sniper station. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hunter. I gave you the purple beaded bracelet. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and so, uh, my question is, since we kind of got to see uh, May's romance with her ex-husband and kind of her romance with Ward in season one, is there any romance that May will be in in season three? <laughs> Storyline. This is that connection we're talking about. Well, listen, we have a lot of hunky guys on our show, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of new ones, so I don't, I'll take any of them. <laughs> okay. Husband's not listening, is he? There's no way for this to ever get out on the internet. You're fine. You're fine. I just want to first start off by saying I follow you on Instagram, and then you picked the best pair of Halloween boots. I know you're asking everybody which one to pick. And I voted for it, so. Um, my question is, uh, you've done a lot of voice over, over acting up to on the Final Fantasy series, and which is one of my favorites. Um, if someone approached you and wanted you to do another really large, um, big theater movie as a voice actor, would that be something that you feel like you would take on again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I know for my nine-year-old son, he wants me to be in the next Lego movie. <laughs> So I'm working on that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just work for my kids now. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Nina. Hello. So, uh, aside from being a really great actress, uh, what's something else that you're really good at? Can you say that again really loud? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, aside from being an amazing actress, what's something else you are really good at? <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, my, my new motto is, I am a woman of many talents. <laughs> I'm going to just start that as my introduction from now on. Ming Na Wen, welcome Ming Na Wen! Woman of many talents. <laughs> um, I, I, I love to cook. Um, both my parents were chefs, and so I'm a major foodie. And uh, I, I love gardening. and. I'm writing something right now for, uh, for the future. I'm writing a, a, a lifestyle book. And uh, I drink the blood of... Uh... <laughs> Young. <laughs> I'm a vampire. <laughs> but yeah, I'm writing a lifestyle book right now, too. About being a vampire. About being a vampire. <laughs> Secrets to stay young. <laughs> I like your t-shirt. Thank you. Represent. The representing. First off, I'd just like to say that I didn't think it was possible, but you're even more beautiful in person. I paid him to say that. <laughs> And my uh, question is, uh, what was your reaction when you found out that you were going to have to throw down with Sky this last season? Woo! Yeah, that was great. I mean, talk about um, 
an evolution of two characters, you know, um, May didn't trust Sky, didn't believe in her potential, and then as time went on, she became her SO, and then to have, you know, her turn on May, we were ready, you know, we were excited about doing that, that girl on girl fight scene. <laughs> And you know what? She was she cheated. Can I just say? <laughs> if it wasn't for her inhuman power, I would have kicked her ass. <laughs> I was actually at the uh, San Diego panel where they debuted the debut episode, the, the pilot episode, and brought you, know, you guys all out. And it was, just, it was so great seeing everyone was just so gleeful to be able to not only talk about the project publicly, I'm curious about the casting process on it. Or, I, mean, I can't imagine anybody in May's role other than you, so talk a little bit about... Me neither. <laughs> there you go. Uh, talk about the casting process, and because, uh, I mean, there, there had to be such a rigorous thing for not only Marvel, but also for his You mean in the beginning? Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, every actor I know had a different process. I know Chloe went through, like, they put her through the ringer because, uh, you know, they were looking for this young ingenue. <laughs> so thank God I wasn't one of those. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but they brought me in, and at that time, the character wasn't specifically written for an Asian. Um, and uh, I, I was so nervous to audition for Joss Wheaton that I couldn't memorize my lines to save my life. It, it was two pages of dialogue and, you know, after having been in the business for a couple of decades, it was amazing to me that my brain would not work. And then, um, but, you know, somehow I, I challenged myself and got over that hurdle put in a great audition and felt really good about it. Um, and then I was offered the role right after. And they changed the name too, because originally the name of the character was Agent Althea Rice. <laughs> Rice. <laughs> and there was Marissa Tetro, who actually brought it up because apparently Joss and Jed and Jeff uh, Bell, they, it didn't even occur to them. But <laughs> Marissa being Asian, she was like, I don't think we can call her Agent Rice anymore. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned all those awkward interviews like on down the road. Right up here. Yes, um, I saw you practice uh, martial arts very good. On the, on the shelf. So, do you actually practice martial art? Um, yeah, but I, I always like to say that uh, I'm really good at faking things. <laughs> <laughs> with some of the stunt women who work um, alongside me and they do wushu so it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty intense and I like it but I'm you know I, I'm, I'm still working on it <laughs> yeah. thank you yeah don't uh, you want me to do kick free? the men of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. don't have to worry about is having to, like, you know, having to Somebody said they're going to make sure it's not going to 
still uh, press stare court about Ginger Rogers. Ginger did everything I did, but backwards and in heels, so it was always more difficult for her. Yes. Yeah. Right on here. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I was just wondering when you found out what happened in Bahrain and how you reacted once you found out. Yeah, um, I don't know how, if, well, I won't, I'll try not to give anything away. It's been a month, people. Come on. You can't keep waiting for Netflix. <laughs> that life was seven numbers big. Fifty on iTunes already. Um, How do you think season three got here? Come on. <laughs> uh, I was really. Uh, I wanted to know so much about May's backstory. You know, to have to wait a year and a half before uh, that episode was revealed, I was very nervous about reading it, I was worried, and even after I read it and I was so excited about it, I was worried that it wasn't going to meet the audience expectations, you know, because you build something up, a backstory up, and the mystery of it for so long. Um, but uh, Gary Brown, who is one of your friends, one of my or so Devin says, I don't know. Yeah, well, I know. Whatever. I'll, I'll go to Gary. Gary, yeah, I'm a dummy. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, There'll be a code for it. But Gary, yeah, Gary Brown directed it, and uh, it was just, I was so happy with the episode, and then I was so happy when it aired, the, uh, the response that um, the audience had, you know, to it. It's, uh, it's such an important aspect of her character. And to be able to go back and actually see why she became Agent May, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, because there, there's a lot of real um, serious issues involved with it, you know, with um, post-traumatic stress syndrome. You know, I, I think that's what's so great about Marvel, is that even though it's a comic book, it really is about humanity and it's really about real issues and, and coping with um, a lot of relationship problems and, and political issues and the world at large, but you know we kind of wrap it up in this fantasy world. So uh, I, I was really grateful for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm a little short, but uh, <laughs> do you personally know what? Like, oh, a little short. You're a lot short. <laughs> Yeah, short too. Oh, yeah. And good things come in small packages. <laughs> okay, but, uh... <laughs> Whatever. Um, do you personally know what SHIELD stands for in your new TV show? Do I know what SHIELD stands for? Yeah. Like, in, in, in what sense? Like, uh... Like what? S H E L. Like the, yeah. like the, uh, uh, um, the, the abbreviations. The abbreviations. Yeah. <sighs> Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistic Division. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Marvel's acronyms of Shield. <laughs> Yeah, he would just do it just because he, you know, he's such a goof. <laughs> 
Who's <laughs> least likely to start singing? Ian. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. In your opinion, what do you think Mulan would think of what May's done so far? Oh, I think uh, Mulan would be very proud of Agent May. In fact, I think Agent May is probably a descendant of Mulan. <laughs> Thick writers get to work. <laughs> Hi, Lee. So, Hi. Um, with your issues with Sky, since y'all had the big girl fight now, you know, I think y'all will ever be friends again and, you know, lovey dovey sister bond? Well, she's been, she's grounded. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I certainly hope so. You know, I, I don't think. I mean, in fact, I think in the last episode, you saw May understanding why Sky made the decisions that she made, you know, and, and May's, I think, um, uh, response to Sky uh, in, in, giving, in giving her forgiveness was uh, to say, my head still hurts, when, because uh, Sky knocked her out for a while. <laughs> and I think that's her way of saying it. And I forgive you. It's kind of like my dad when he says to my brother, you know good son. I tell my brother, that means he says, I love you. <laughs> May's got a little of that. At the end of season two, May just suddenly left. Where do you think she went? Because all I've heard is that she's probably taking drugs on an island. <laughs> of Tahiti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like you mean penicillin, right? Drugs in like <laughs> Thailand. 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 Yeah. Ali. Um, what was your reaction when May and War picked up? Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Until we, you know, until we realized what he was really about. But still, I think even then, we go, oh yeah. <laughs> Will we ever see a Felinda kiss? Aww. I don't know. I mean, I, I love, I love that you're a Felinda fan. Thank you. Who else? Who else? I just love the relationship that May and Colson has because it is about friendship and loyalty and being co-workers and, and you know soldiers together. But uh, there's definitely affection, you know, in there somewhere. Who knows? Woo! I don't mind it. <laughs> He's one of the cute guys on the show. <laughs> Who do you think would be the most likely out of the cast of Agents of Shield to be able, worthy to lift Thor's hammer? Oh. <laughs> That's a loaded question, baby. <laughs> when you ask me that question. <laughs> I've already put it in my mind. I'm sure they would give it a good effort <laughs> in lifting Thor's hammer. <laughs>
good question. I'm stumped. I mean, Loki comes to mind because he's my favorite villain. Who would you like? I would have to go with Red Skull. <laughs> Woo! Oh boy, yeah. I don't know how much help he'd be. <laughs> Joker. Yes, it's a Joker. Let's get to you. <laughs> be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Which movie or movie character do you want to be in and why? Um, well, I think um, I would want to be Agent Melinda May. <laughs> And, uh, and just, uh, you know, be alongside some of the Avengers, whether it's uh, with, uh, with the, the Black Widow, or Thor, you know, Iron Man. I mean, how much fun would that be? That, I'm already living such a geek girl's dream by being in the Marvel world, so any bone they want to throw me, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. With Civil War coming, we've already seen that the cast is already bigger than what we saw in Avengers. I'm almost surprised that they haven't even been able to ask any of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. crew to show up, at least just for lip service and nothing else. He said lip service. Rub it off on me. If and when that happens, it's it's something that we probably wouldn't even be able to talk about if that <laughs> did happen. Yeah, the Sunburners. But um, gosh, I, I hope I hope you know because uh, I, I know my nine-year-old son would love for that to happen. He keeps asking me, Mom, when are you gonna be one of the movies? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, kid. <laughs> because of this, Jaws please eat him. Were you ever worried that he was going to kill you? <laughs> I still worry. <laughs> that is true. My wife and I are massive weed and fans. We're sitting there going, this is a Joss Whedon show. Someone's going to die in every damn episode. I mean, did you see the finale? For those who saw the season finale for season two, I mean, there were a lot of dead people. I want to say it's been a pleasure watching on TV and seeing you on the screen and seeing you like on the link over here. It feels wonderful to see you. Thank you. No my question. I'll give you my number later. Oh. <laughs> I got very cheap. Sorry. <laughs> so my question is, if you were to choose to be in the Civil War, what side? What side? If I was to be in some... Of course, on the side of good. I mean, both are good. It's just two different ethics of the way they think. Oh... Heroes are regulated. I know. I, I, I don't care as long as I'm in the movie. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, we've got season three of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming. Have you started production yet, or when when we uh, go in front of cameras? Uh, no, I'm in that blissful state called hiatus. Yeah. It's so awesome. I mean, we, we had a killer schedule for season two, and um, I'm looking forward to going back to work, but not until the middle of July. So, yeah, we, we go back a lot earlier than most people do for a series because of all the post-production uh, post stuff that our incredible VisFX team has to do. I mean, it, it amazes me every single week when I see the final product because we shoot our episodes in eight days and then our VisFX people have at most two to three weeks to get all those special effects put in, plus the music by Bear McCurry, our VisFX team um, headed by Mark Kolpak, 
these are superhuman beings. I'm serious. I don't know how they do it, but I'm just thankful that they're there. Did you tell your agent there's no way I'm working during hiatus or were there other projects you're ever I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you're eternally great. I'm talking about no. any, any other like, film, film work small. Yeah, I try not to because literally we have two months. But, um, you know, if, if, any, if any of the, I don't know, who's, who's some great directors right now? There's so many great directors. It really depends on the project and if, it, if I can fit it in. So, yeah, I, I try to take the hiatuses off. So. That's smart thing to actually get some rest in. Yes. And with, with the, the amazing career you've had so far, and at the age of 29, you have your whole career ahead of you, so it's phenomenal. Hey, she did it. Is there one role now that you would like to play that you have not had a chance to do yet? <sighs> Everybody knows, right? No? Nobody knows what my bucket list is? What? Come on! Move on! Live action! Oh, the live action movie. Yeah, I do hope they call me. Hello? <laughs> um, but Carrie Fisher was sitting next to me in the signing, and my bucket list is to be any character in one of the remaining Star Wars movies. <laughs> working with Samuel Jackson, and I was that close to a Jedi, <laughs> and now I'm sitting next to Carrie. Do you know Carrie flipped me off today? <laughs> it was so amazing. <laughs> because when she showed up, I just like made this huge announcement. Let's get me Fraser, everybody! Everybody cheered, and she flipped me off. It was awesome. <laughs> On behalf of everybody here who is a fan of not only strong female characters, but fantastic characterization on TV, it is an absolute gas to see you in action every week on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Thank you very much for coming and sharing.